Hello and welcome back. Today we are in the Boeing 727 aircraft by Flight Sim Simulations. And no, it is not the version for X Plane 11. However, I am using it anyway because I do not have the latest, as you may have noticed. Um, yeah. We are back here at Aalborg and we are going to make a flight here from Aalborg to um, to Copenhagen Airport in our night's aircraft. Um, I'm using a, a GPS here um, as the nav source and I just entered the flight plan. It is a flight to Copenhagen Airport. Um, we could try to select the procedure arrival. Um, it might be just be one November mic. I can't remember it. Um, let's see the here. Let's see it. Is this one loading it and then we can say direct when we get airborne and then we will be flying the main route towards Copenhagen Airport. The approach is not required as such. Um, we can go in and of course if we have entered something uh, that we do not want um, can always go into the flight plan and press the menu and then you can uh, delete the the approach um, if that's uh, what you want to and that's what we want to do in this particular case you can see so I can go in there menu and delete the approach here we go now it's just the main main star for the arrival into Copenhagen Airport. So now we are ready and um, we can depart uh, when we get airborne. We can press the button and then it flies directly to the first waypoint. That's the easiest way for us to do this and basically also in reality uh, what they are often doing. Okay, but since we are in an airliner, I will demonstrate my uh, pushback plug in here that we can use in order to push the aircraft. And it's very handy because we are using the aircraft's own axis, so it's not limited to anything. You can taxi the aircraft wherever you like. And Slowing the forces, the aircraft would move slower if I move this down to it, that should start slowing down. Of course, you could always use the brake, as you can see, and the aircraft would stop. Of course, brake. As you can see, now the force gets too low, so the aircraft can't really be pushed. So you have to find the right values here in order to not push back to the fast or to slowly. But other than that you can actually push the aircraft in the main position you want. You could also pull the aircraft just like a pushback truck can do. Just go into the negative values and the aircraft has to be pulled instead. Now I can pull the aircraft out on the main center line here and since we are in the airliner we could also switch on my small filler project there we go so now it actually works as it should it's all such small files I have created just in order to make my 
much easier. Okay. And then you press the stop button. You can stop the force. There you go. And the pushback has been completed. So now I can just zoom on the manual throttle here. And just give it a bit of throttle here in order to get us texting here. Of course, we would need um, a bit of light here in the main cockpit. Um, and as you know, I have the problem with the mouse. Um, would guess a new mouse would help. I actually tried with a, another mouse and it actually worked a bit better, but I would need a new one. But yeah, I don't really got the money for it, even though they are not the, the most expensive. Uh, thing in the world. Okay, let's get the flaps at five position. And the nice here is we actually has the uh, we can't there it was take off. And we're using flaps five, so it's V1 at 137 knots, and we are at the same speed, and 149 is V2. Okay. So here we go, with our taxing. Um, next up uh, in the series here, if nothing else comes uh, in, uh, I guess we would take the Tulis Airbus A319. demonstrate how to operate that aircraft as I really want to demonstrate a few different aircrafts here even though of course I tend to demonstrate those aircraft I like the most and set it for the GPS source. Do note that in this uh, latest version it is mouse school wheel support here for which the source is active instead of in the previous versions if you are not aware of that but I made an update. And another note um, for my autopilot project This version 3.2 is still pretty much in testing phase. Uh, I have seen a few side effects uh, for values and such. So if you um, have something um, that doesn't work as it did in the previous version, try to go back and, and test the version 3.1 to see if um, if it works the same way just note that you have to restart the entire simulator in order to get it uh, working properly because um, the simulator has a tendency of um, remembering some code and that actually what have made it a bit difficult to to program it in the beginning because things might have looked like they was working and then um, it was because of um, of programmings that you have made so many programming so it actually had some information but it that it do not have when you start off the simulator um, but the main reason I say go back to version 3.1 and check it out with that one is that uh, there ha have been made some major changes to the code so 
so uh, to see if if uh, the old codes works better even though those codes um, um, is not as uh, optimized or optimal to use as um, those that has been uh, more generalized out on uh, my later projects here. To create to create a new um, standard or a newer standard, I should say, than what we have seen in the past, because of course the coding is more or less the same standards uh, I have been using. It's just that there has been some code optimizations um, that I have tried to get updated across um, uh, a few projects <coughs> so um, that's the, the reason behind We are airborne. We can uh, open our small GPS here, and we can see where we actually are. And we can um, activate the autopilot. Set the flight level change to our main target uh, climb speed here, and switch on the nav mode. Um, and as I was mentioning, we could go into the flight plan and say direct test speed. There we go. Then the aircraft will take it from our current position instead of the position of the airport. So we do not walk. I need to turn entirely around, get back towards the Olbo airport on the main line here. Now we just take it from our current position. That would save us a bit of time and would be perfectly fine. Okay, let's get the flaps retracted as well as acceleration going here. Let's see if we can get the gear to the off position. Mm -hmm. There we go. Then let's keep the acceleration going here. wing so we are getting through the clouds here and now we are just on our way towards Copenhagen Airport it shouldn't take that long to fly to Copenhagen main flight path here. Um, air traffic control could set us direct to Trano, as I like to do sometimes. It's pretty easy just to, 
to uh, mark the main waypoint and then press direct because then it would just erase the rest and then go from there. And now that I actually got your attention, um, if air traffic controller in such a scenario as this wanted us to fly direct to, um, let's see, test me um, ag again, due to traffic they want just, just to fly direct test me, well, um, it's important that you do not, do not just press the direct button and then enter it, because then it would erase the whole flight plan. You need to enter it right here, into the main flight plan. That's very important that we do that else we would raise the whole uh, right man. Enter is accept. And then you can go in and say plan and direct to yes and then we would draw the line and the aircraft would fly else the aircraft seems to can't really find uh, the right course to intercept it, the main waypoint um, and the proper way would have been to set the main uh, the current heading no uh, when you do those uh, changes here, so the aircraft would not have done this kind of turn. Um, that's the most safe operation. Also, because if something goes wrong, um, you have time to enter the data again. So, so that's very, very important. <coughs> okay, and now we just have to. Make sure that we do not overspeed here. And um, we got a little um, cheating method. However, we need to maintain the engines because else we could get into problems. And right now I actually see a problem here. Not sure if you actually has noticed it, but um, we do not have any readings from the second and the third engine. Um, here is the main reason. This is a very good example of that. We caught fire on all the engines. So it's just a question of time before we actually would lose all the engines. And there we actually go. We lost all three engines. And now we just miss a big floating plane. Then our job is to see what can be done. Okay, we can see um, or who is close. What we also should do is we should take this serious pool and try to use the distinguishers in order to try to get the fire under control in the engines. So, uh, 
still have the engine fire okay I have to use extinguishers here in order to get it working that's strange no notes of course third engine is out however engine one and two is still on fire the odd thing here is that it does not seem like that the aircraft actually is giving us any indication if the fire is, the, is still there or not Okay, we need to divert, and we are going to divert to Aarhus Airport now. Um, and we will do that uh, as good as possible. Um, however, it's just a question of time before we actually run, off, uh, run out of electricity in reality. Um, and our GPS would actually be switched off so right now it would be the good old school we are flying um, can't remember if this aircraft actually has a language you um, I mean it is more in the old school uh, sorry, the, a bit newer aircraft that actually has the RAM at you mind. But uh, in reality, it would be automatically deployed the RAM at you mind. So now I actually um, demonstrated to you how uh, important it is that you make uh, correct uh, engine management for this particular aircraft as you would try those engines. Um, and that was also why I did I did not want to turn on the auto throttle because um, this is what could happen if you switch that on. Now I just left the engines in full throttle um, so you could have the um, experience of it. So right now we are just drifting our way towards Aarhus and the autopilot I can just move it because we're not gonna make any use out of that today and now we are close to Aarhus airport so we are could actually get uh, lower now um, and I am certain that the weather would not be the best for our emergency landing here however we do not have any other options so um, this is actually what we are trying to do um, as we will try to do our best here in order to make a safe landing here into Aarhus Airport.
and I would use a bit of speed brakes now um, just in order to make the aircraft get down quicker because as you can see on the GPS we are actually past the main airport and we just need to make a, a turn back towards the main airport and then make a safe landing um, now I don't have the main manual of the aircraft um, as they are of course given procedures uh, for landing it this way because the aircraft gets more and more heavy right now you can't see it but in fact the aircraft does not turn that quickly anymore uh, as the airspeed drops as well of course um, and since I do not have air traffic control I have to use the GPS in order to to try to um, make sense uh, see where we actually are more or less okay and I really would like the aircraft to be turned around right now I know that we are in a steep turn here uh, I also know that we have to drop quite some speed as well as as uh, altitude now I know it's the landing gear I know it's a bit early however then I do not need the um, the spoilers uh, deployed in order to land because right now we have a nice um, altitude and air speed for our main approach here as you can see um, of course we are going um, quicker down and here comes the, ch the challenge because right now as I'm going through the clouds I can't see what is up or down because I only got more or less my standard uh, instrument here I got this oh, small guy here to stand by instrument and I hope that I would get down and get some better visuals here soon because um, right now we are getting very low with a high speed and we certainly can't see anything down at 800 feet there we go there we go there we go that's just nice let's get speed brakes in and as you can see it is very slowly extending the flaps um, and I have also to be very careful that I do not deploy the flaps too much as then we would slow down too quickly and now I have lowered the speed brakes again in order not to, to get too low as you can see we are a bit low we need to make it to the runway at least um, and right now you can see how we are slowing down as we do not have any forward throttle here so here we go and um, we are trying to get the aircraft safely down here there we go and it is it's just on with the brakes Let's turn on the swivel tiller, as that might help us a bit in order to steer. Even though you can see, since we do not have hydraulics, um, it's not working that way as we would expect, and that's why I really want the aircraft to stop right now. But um, there you go.
a safe landing here at Aarhus Airport. I hope you enjoyed the flight, even though I introduced a few problems for us, as well as um, was talking a bit about the GPS, but um, you could also see up at the runway condition uh, the braking action is only fair right now because it's raining, so it's not good. It is fair brake action. Um, it wasn't a pretty landing, however, we got safely on the ground and we can walk away from it and that's the main part. But thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.